Okay, everybody. Hi there. Welcome to the first edition of the John Boulder Journalism video blog. Yeah, I've been blogging for a while now, and uh, I've decided to step into the next century and try something with video. It's a little scary, but uh, I'm doing pretty good so far. Figured our first topic would be, um, I think in the uh, first episode of the Ultimate Fighter 15, which was uh, last Friday. It's a pretty decent first episode, good fights, uh, fights getting into the house. Uh, obviously this season, the coaches are uh, Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber, which is really nice because uh, I think a few people are still kind of concerned about the whole phantom weight and the lower weight division. They don't, they're not as into it as uh, they probably should be because it's really exciting. But uh, this is a good way to introduce uh, two of the division's, division's top fighters to the uh, masses. I thought they'd, uh, they'd do this uh, a little bit before now with Cruz and Faber coaching, but uh, it's better late than never. So let's just uh, jump right into it. In the episode, uh, Dana White announced that all the fights to get into the house would only be one round. Now, I like this because obviously uh, they had to do it for time constraints. And it forces fighters to try and go for the finish. The problem is, I think um, some of the fighters obviously are slow starters, and that's definitely not good for them. And also, I think it, um, it excluded a lot of guys that usually, like, they have to build up to a finish, and they couldn't really do that with this whole one-round fight. But overall, it was good, uh, produced a number of exciting fights. First of which, um, I consider this a pretty big upset. Uh, Joe Proctor, who trains with, uh, Joe Lozon out of Boston, Massachusetts, he, uh, he actually defeated who I think was one of the best prospects on the show, Jordan Rinaldi, by guillotine choke in the first, obviously in the first round, I'm still getting used to that. Uh, Rinaldi actually has a win over uh, last year's finalist, Dennis Bermudez. So, um, in the in the fight, Proctor looked pretty good. Uh, he was eating some shots, but he showed a lot of uh, that Lozon killer instinct. And uh, he got the sub, and uh, it was a really nice guillotine, actually. It looked really tight, so uh, he's going to be something to watch for sure. Next up, um, we had a guy that I've actually really come to like now, Cristiano Marcelo. He's actually he's actually the head BJJ coach for uh, Chewbacca Academy. He's trained uh, fighters such as uh, Vanderlei Silva and Shogun Hua, and he faced off against Jared Carlston. Um, I was the thing I also liked about Marcelo was uh, he showed a lot of power. His stand up looked kind of awkward. Which could it could come along with some training, but he showed to really have powerful kicks and some powerful punches. Uh, once he took the fight to the ground, he got full mount like just like that, like instantly. Uh, he delivered some ground pound. I thought he'd go for a submission on his first possible, uh, the first possible time he could. But uh, he chose to ground a pound, and eventually he did get a rear naked choke at about uh, two and a half minutes. He was uh, pretty impressive. The next fight was. It's hard to really gauge the next fight. It faced it uh it involved uh Sam Cecilia fighting off against Aaron Beach. Um, I say it's hard to gauge this fight because Cecilia won by knockout in eight seconds. Um, basically Cecilia looks like a mini Johnny Hendricks just without the full beard. But uh yeah, he delivered a shotgun blast to Beach and he went out on yeah, eight seconds. It's hard to tell where Cecilia ranks in the competition, but um, obviously he has power in his hands and it looks good. Yeah, the next fight also featured a guy with uh, quite a bit of untapped power as uh, Chris Tickle took on uh, Austin Lyons. Uh, much like last fight, Tickle uh, showed off his power and he won by knockout in about 25 seconds. Uh, on my original viewing, I thought that the, uh, the uh, stoppage might have been like premature and not good, but on the replay, uh, it looks like Austin Lyons is trying to get a takedown on the referee, I believe it was Steve Mazzagatti, after the stoppage, so uh, it's probably pretty good. Up next, we had uh, Andy Ogle, he's actually a Brit, and uh, I believe he holds the win over uh, former Ultimate Fighter competitor Aaron Wilkinson from uh, Ultimate Fighter uh, GSP vs. Koscheck. You may know him as the one of the guys that sub Mark Stevens in the Indian show. Not that that really distinguishes him much. Uh, he took on Brandon Weaver. Weaver, sorry, I'm sorry, Brandon Weaver. My bad. Sorry, Brandon. Um, 
This fight, honestly, uh, it was probably my least favorite fight, mostly because there was about a two and a half to three minute triangle choke attempt. Um, just an attempt, didn't get it. Uh, it wasn't really that much to score. It was a triangle choke attempt. Ogo hit a good punch on the feet and got a couple takedowns. So therefore, Ogo is moving on in, into the house. Next up, we had Texas wrestler Cody Fister taking on Vince from Hell Pichel. Uh, probably one of my favorite nicknames in the house and in MMA today. Um, Fister actually looked pretty good. He, had, he showed some good wrestling, decent clinch work. Unfortunately, Pichel got on top and delivered an elbow that, shall we say, from Hell. Yeah, I'm not bad for fun. Um, that cut, on a, it opened up a cut and it looked like Fister got stabbed in the head. So, uh, yeah, Pichel won in about, um, via rear naked choke in just over three minutes. Or, just over three and a half minutes. Uh, I'd say Pichel is one of my Dark Horse candidates, to be completely honest. Following that, uh, John Colfer took on another Brit, Mark Glover. Uh, Colfer used his wrestling and clinch work to dominate the fight. Um, as, as, if anybody's seen the fight, you'll notice that Glover does his best Diaz impression and basically throws up his hands as Gopher's, you know, using mixed martial arts and not just boxing with him, as I'm sure many would prefer. Uh, Gopher looked decent, um, there's really not much to say about the fight, a lot of takedowns, clinch work, it was, it was good though, good performance, like I'm, I'm a person to judge. Next up we had, uh, Chris Sanders, they, defeating, uh, Chase Hackett by unanimous decision. Um, I like Chase, ha Chase Hackett, mostly because I believe he was the son of Jeff Hackett. And he had quite a sweet mustache. Unfortunately, he didn't win. Um, Saunders looked pretty good, obviously, like I said before. Um, a lot of good wrestlers this season. Um, in our next fight, one of the more controversial competitors this season, Dakota Cochran stepped into the cage. Um, it's been much hoopla about his past in these uh, last few weeks, really. I think most people have probably don't have much of a problem with it. I honestly didn't even think about it. Uh, in the fight, he, uh, he used a lot of clinch work along the cage. Tried out his wrestling. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work. Uh, his opponent was James Vick. Uh, Vick probably got the better of the standing and his takedown defense and just clinch defense. Won him the fight as James Vick defeated Dakota Cochrane by a uh, split decision. In the next fight, uh, Michael Tysla, Tysa, Michael Tysa defeated Jonathan Visante. Um, it looked like they were trying to pump up Visante a lot. They gave him quite a few, uh, like their little interview montage segments that last like two seconds. But um, the fight was all really the fight was all uh, Tysa. Sorry, I'm butchering your name. Uh, he won by rear naked choke in about two minutes. And honestly, he was on top for about minute 55 of that. So. Next up, uh, I believe a guy nobody's talking about enough, Mike Rio, fought. Um, Rio, Mike Rio took on Ali McLean. Uh, Rio showed really good wrestling. Uh, he got the rear naked choke submission. But I honestly see Rio going really far in this competition. Next up, we had uh, one of the bigger upsets of the house, this kid, Justin Lawrence. Showed some very, very nice kicking and striking. Defeating uh, WEC veteran James Krause by about a minute and a half. TKOing him. Um, I look forward to seeing some ground game from Lawrence, which... Because I, I honestly want to see how good this kid really is. Uh, my personal favorite, Darren Crookshank defeated Drew Dober by unanimous decision. Crookshank used his really good wrestling. Um, honestly, the fight would have been over earlier if Dober didn't have a chin of steel. In our third last fight, there's a, I guess there's a little bit of, there's some news out of it. Originally, Jeremy Larson won the fight. He defeated Jeff Smith. But now it came out that Larson has been medically suspended. So we're not really sure if he's going to compete in the season. Uh, it sucks because obviously it's any fighter's dream to compete and win the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, if they have to replace him, I assume they're going to bring Dakota Cochrane back. Uh, he lost by split decision. And uh, he's a pretty marketable, well, I don't know if he's marketable, but he's, he's one of the bigger names, and also it'll create some controversy in the house, which is, I'm sure, something they're looking for. Let's be honest, that's kind of what sells. 
Um, other than Cochran, I don't know anybody that would come back. I wouldn't mind seeing Jordan and Aldi just as obviously what he's done in the uh, smaller promotions, but after losing by guillotine in two minutes, I highly doubt it's going to happen. James Krause would be interesting too, but I mean he lost in a minute. So, uh, finally, I think oh, obviously here's another upset, but I think this fight would have been a little different if there was more than one round. Al Ayakinta defeated um, John Tuck. As some of you may know, John Tuck is a uh, six and zero, all all wins via either uh, TKO or KO. He is also an Abu Dhabi uh, grappling champion. Thing was, in the fight, uh, Tuck actually broke his right toe. In a gruesome scene that featured Ayakinta, uh, actually stepped on Tuck's foot and it broke a toe. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Tuck back in the uh, the spot that might be filled by Larson, but with the broken toe, I don't really know how that's going to work. In our final uh, fight, uh, the Ultimate Fighter 13 uh, competitor, you'll probably know this guy, Miles Jury, actually made his return at lightweight this time. Um, he was injured on uh, the uh, Lesnar versus Dos Santos season. He got a fight here against Ak against Akbar Ariloa. Sorry, but um, Jury used a lot of wrestling. Um, good positional dominant. It w it was really dominant. Uh, Akbar could probably use a wrestling class or two. But um, ref had to stand the fight up a number a number of times just to give you an idea of how it went. But uh, Jury looked pretty good on. Um, he won the unanimous decision, obviously. So, I'm thinking, just from first impression, if I had to go maybe like a top four on the season, I'd probably say, um, hmm. Obviously, Darren Crookshank, I fully expect him to make the finals. Uh, I also expect Miles Jury to go really far. Uh, he's been on the Ultimate Fighter before, plus his wrestling is really, really good in that matchup. Uh, I think Al I Quinta. I think that the guy who defeated John Tuck will go pretty far. Um, he looked pretty good against Tuck. I can see him doing quite a bit on the show. And I also like Mike Rio to make the final four. I think a lot of people will underestimate Rio. Um, I mentioned before I liked Cristiano Marcelo. Unfortunately, I think I see him a lot at like kind of a a Vinny Magalesh, whereas he has absolutely sick BJJ. But I think he'll get caught in the stand up. However, I still see him making an impact, which is nice. Overall, this season, it looks like it should produce a number of um, pretty good contenders as I, for the UFC. Well, maybe not contenders, but some solid middle-of-the-road guys that can get quite a few fights in the UFC. Uh, I see Marcelo, maybe Cecilla. Uh, I'd like to see Pachel. I think he's better than a lot of people give him credit for. Mike Rio, uh, Justin Lawrence, Darren Crookshaw. Al Ayakinta, Miles Jury, and maybe could go to Cochrane if he comes back. Could all be UFC regulars. So honestly, I think there's about nine fighters on this season that could be regularly employed by the UFC. Uh, that's just my thought. Obviously, I'm probably wrong. But um, thank you for tuning in to this first video blog. I I enjoyed it, and you know what? There might be more in the future. Who knows? But probably not. Thank you anyway for listening to me ramble.